Well, I, I, this is fabulous. We have uh, some microphones that are out in the audience. Raise your hand if you have a question for. So we've got one over here. I don't know if there's, and yeah. Thank um, you. Raise so your hand. Uh, yeah, raise, okay, you got it. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I have your picture in my bathroom. I was telling my mother, and I look at you every day, so it's great to see you in the flesh. <laughs> on the mirror. I want to be like you. <laughs> so I uh, have this question because it drives me crazy when I read the um, reviews of the company in the newspapers and they... And I don't uh, read them, so... And they chide <laughs> the company for uh, doing the same works. And to me, it seems like legacy. And I just wonder how do you, uh, I asked Mr. Battle about oh, it, but yeah. how do you react to I react to, to that by saying, have you ever heard of Swan Lake? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, Swan Lake isn't done every day, but how old is it? <laughs> And I love it when it's well done, you know, so I love, I love good dance, I love brilliant dance. And if you have a masterpiece in your own backyard, don't trash it. All right. First, I'd like to say thank you so much for all the uh, years you've given us as a performer and now as an administrator and sort of um, a leader of a you know, world-class dance company. So how have you managed to sort of balance sort of the left brain, right brain in terms of the transition to having been a brilliant dancer and now having taken the company to another level in terms of having established a permanent home and endowment for the company? Mm -hmm. You know, what's been sort of the secret of your, you know, the secret sauce in terms of making that transition and balancing the two. I, get, I just get along well with, with the people that I work with because we're all on the same boat, you know. At, at the time that the building was coming along and we were achieving the things that we were achieving, I happened to be at the helm, you know, and I, 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 I don't know the left brain and the right brain thing. I'm just, it's kind of... You know, it's kind of, it's, it's just all there, you know. And when it needs to work, it works. And, uh, uh, and I'm always surrounded by loving people. I've always, that's, that's just a blessing to be surrounded that, by people who care about you and that we're all on the same journey. And our journey happened to be the Alvin Ailey journey, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, there, there is, there's just no digressing from it. It's so powerful, you know, and it's so spirit-driven that um, you, you, it's, it's undeniable, you know. And, and there, what a legacy this man has left us that, we, I mean, that everybody wants to join the bandwagon. I mean, that's why when I asked Robert, would you be interested in, you know, running this company, he almost dropped out the seat. You know, his face, and Robert does not have a, he doesn't really have all these expressions he does. He's really good at, you know, at that. Delightful man, you would love him. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is powerful. This is potent stuff. This is, this is the good elixir, you know. And uh, um, uh, never needs to be diluted. All right, we have a question at the front. I'm sure there's others uh, too. But. Where are we going? Yep. Here's a dear friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hold the, hold the mic close. Judy, could you explain to the audience, because most of the audience may not know this, about the Ailey camp? Yes, can you tell the audience your name? <laughs> I'm Sylvia Lindsay and from Sil the Cal Performance Board. Somebody know Sylvia, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's part of Alvin's legacy, children. It's always been part of Alvin's legacy from the beginning, uh, reaching out, um, making sure that uh, uh, that children are embraced 
uh, in understanding how creative they are, uh, how, how they can be contributors to, uh, to their lives and to the rest of the world, um, how, how nothing should be in their way to stifle that creativity. So that now that we have uh, 10 Ailey camps across these United States, uh, of course, where are we in Berkeley? We're in Oakland? Yes, we have in uh, Berkeley. Berkeley. In Berkeley, we have. It's been gone now for what? This is our 11th year. 11th year, 10th anniversary last year. But if you can imagine, these camps were started, I believe they were started in 84 or 86 in Kansas City, Missouri. Hmm. Because Alvin loved his music and he loved some Kansas City. And he loved that, that he wanted to be able to help these young people understand how beautiful they are, how creative they are. And, and what comes out of these camps is unbelievable. These children that are just, you know, people talk to them and then they're, they're interviewed and some of them want to be in the camp and some of them don't want to come at all. <laughs> By the time those eight weeks or those six weeks are over, they don't want to leave. They want to come back because the, their lives have been enriched by their own endeavor when they realized that they created this, this painting that they did or they made that musical instrument or they wrote those feelings down in a, in a poet poem or in prose, you know, and, and they said what was coming from the heart and you know that, that young people don't hold anything back. They just say it. You know, and it might be shocking to us sometimes, but they are telling their truth the way they see it with young eyes, which can then open our old eyes sometimes, you know. Um, the Ailey camps, uh, at one point I wanted them to be, and I still do, I want to say at one point, I need them all over the country. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have them all over the world, but all over the country, because I could see us having a jamboree, you know, and bringing everybody back together again. Uh, the Ailey campers do come back, and the older, older ones revisit and help the younger ones as they come in. So it, it's an absolute work of brilliance that Mr. Ailey thought of that inclusiveness of the communities in each uh, city that we work in, because each city is different. Yeah. Each Ailey camp is different, but we have them. Yeah, quite beautiful. Okay, there's a question. How are we doing? Yep. We're doing. We're, 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 I'm being present, no, but I yes, still got a I, plane to catch. <laughs> yes. This, this, you know, goddess has to catch a plane, so we are mindful of time. But this, this is my big U-turn. <laughs> I came in about five hours ago. Oh my goodness! And I'm catching we, the, we are you so know, the red eye for you. And and Nashime was the first one that even mentioned this to me in the first place last That's right. year. So and all we're, credit. We're grateful to Nashime for for oh. manifesting this. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Um, my name Good. is David Allen. Um, I was able to meet Dizzy Gillespie before he passed away. Um, I can barely understand. Yeah, can you hold you the mic yeah. closer? You, you were what? I was able to meet uh, Dizzy Gillespie uh, before he passed away. Brilliant man. Back in 1993, about 1986, I met him. And he mentioned to me that all the arts were connected. Yes. You know, architecture, music, dance, and everything was all connected. I really didn't understand that until like 10 years later. But he started giving me definitions of harmony and things like that. How would you, what is the relationship between dance and architecture in relationship to harmony? How would you describe you that? You really want me to answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a graduate school seminar. <laughs> architecture, music, and dance. Well, let's just keep it to architecture and just music. <laughs> Ar uh, wait, hold it. Architecture and... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Architecture and dance. Architecture yes. and dance. Yes. Well, structure, of course. Okay. You know, structure. Okay. But music is the same way. You got structure. You have, you, you, you know, 
beautiful architecture, I guess is in the eye of the beholder, but the beautiful architecture is what takes my eye and takes me on a journey when I see it. But it has a structure, right? We have our technique when we dance and with our music, there is structure. We have techniques when we dance. So those are the connective tissues. But what's interesting about Mr. Gillespie is he used to pass by the stage door of city center uh, because he lived in the neighborhood. And I would say hello to him. And he thought he was hiding because you know how he used to wear the cap like that. And so yeah. he thought he was hiding. And he knew me and I knew him. But I had the privilege and honor of having Billy Wilson choreograph the Winter in Lisbon, winter. which wow. was in the repertory of the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. And even this year, uh, we're using his music again, the winter, uh, um, above the night in Tunisia. Night in Tunisia. Right? Uh, yeah. uh, Art Blakey. Wonderful. Art Blakey. Art, yeah. His version, right? His version, okay. Art Blakey's version. Done okay. by a young choreographer that Mr. Mr. Battle found, you know. So. Oh, this is, this is great. great uh, yeah, but the, and then I was just, I, also I was just with, with Winton. Uh, because Bobby McFerrin sang oh, with Jazz right. at Lincoln Center. Last, yeah, I went to rehearsal. Week. Yes, last week. Yeah, okay. and, and talk about structure, you know, and, and, and how it can stand up to anything. But was the last time, I mean, some of y'all heard Bobby McFerrin, all you know is be happy and go lucky and all that. Bobby McFerrin is a stone musician, stone musician. <laughs> he is incredible, and to hear the structure of Winton on his horn and Bobby, they did a back and forth. Oh, incredible. And in the beautiful architecture of jazz at Lincoln Center. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm afraid this is gonna have to be our last question. Um, so whoever gets the mic first. It's going back there. Let's go, okay. Hi. <laughs> um, I have a quick question. Um, so I know you've worked with Camille Brown and also Alonzo King, who's located here in the Bay Area. And with who? Alonzo King. Oh, that's my brother. <laughs> um, how do you go about picking choreographers? Picking choreographers? Mm -hmm. I, I go about picking them if they, if, for instance, they're all, it's all different. Alonzo, we met at some luncheon or something. I, I actually had never seen his work, oh. but I can fake a lot when I'm meeting choreographers, <laughs> you know, if, I, if they come with good reputations. And he was just so genuine and so warm and so just right there, present, mm -hmm. you know? And we talked to each other and I said, oh, I can't, would you do a piece for us? Mind you, I hadn't seen a thing. <laughs> Would you do it? It's just by word of mouth that this, this man was incredible. So uh, that's how he got into the repertory. Now that, that's kind of really off the wall of how to get a choreographer to come, but I, had, I ended up with either three or two pieces by him. Um, someone like Rennie, my homeboy, Rennie Harris, I got blown away when I went to see one of his performances in Philadelphia on Danko. And I went like, what? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> this is amazing. And you remember Roman Jules, right? OK, so all that put together, I kind of went like, this is going to, number one, be brilliant for the company. It's going to challenge the dancers. That's the most important thing, is to challenge the dancers to move in ways they haven't moved before. Yes, to excite them, to make them feel free in what they can do, what their bodies can accomplish, mind over matter, blah, 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 what their spirits, what they can lovingly do. So that's one way of choosing a choreographer and the other way is the other. Please support Alonso, he's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> well, th this, is going to wrap up our conversation. I just want us to give the most stirring, stirring applause for this goddess. Yeah. This goddess, <laughs> Judith Jamison. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
you so much, everyone, for, for being a part of this evening, and thank you to Charles Ward, who once again has brought us together. And thank you again, Judith Jamison. Bye-bye. <laughs>